Audio cables make up the heart of all sound reinforcement systems, and probably some of the most common types used for microphone and line level audio signals are balanced XLR and quarter range TRS cables. The connectors here feature three points of contact, two of which carry the audio signal and the third used for ground connection. Let's consider how to make XLR cables. Here is a standard microphone or balanced audio cable and a pair of XLR male and female connectors. How you tell which is male or female is simple biology. The males have pins sticking out while the females have holes in them. You get it? If you don't get it, forget about it. Unscrew the XLR connector and slip the outer cover into the cable, making sure it's facing the right direction. Strip the outer jacket of the cable about 2 cm inward to reveal the braided shield conductor. Do this carefully to avoid nicking the wires. You can use a pair of cable strippers or razor blade. Here I'm using a pair of scissors because, well why not, isolate the strands of ground wire and twist them together. Cut off any insulating strings present. Strip the red and white signal wires back about half a centimeter. The final step to preparing the cable is to thin the wires. This is done by melting solder into them. If you take a good look at the connector pins, you will observe that they have been labeled 1, 2 and 3. Pin 1 is connected to the ground wire. Pin 2 is used for the positive or hot signal, while pin 3 is used for the negative or cold signal. You can use either of the red and white signal wires to carry the positive or negative signals. However, you have to stick with whichever approach you employ and be consistent. I am using the red wire for positive signal and the white wire for negative. Red is hot. To hold the connectors in place for soldering, you can use a small vise or a soldering clamp. I will be using this broken microphone receiver that I modified for this purpose by adding these XLR connectors. Now is this the best tool for the job? Probably not, but does it get the job done? Absolutely. Secure the connector and solder the red wire to pin 2, the white wire to pin 3, and the ground wire to pin 1. With that done, we are in the strain relief jacket. Insert the connector into the sleeve by aligning the grooves to the slot and screw on the outer cover. Pins 1 and 2 on the male connector are opposite on the female. Other than that, everything is about the same. Hence, you can repeat the entire process with the other connector. And the job is complete. To test out the cable, you can use a standard cable tester like this one which is specifically designed and built for this purpose. You can also use a standard multimeter set to continuity mode to ensure that each individual pin on one connector is electrically continuous with the corresponding pin on the other connector. Now if you're like me and you consider all that much stress, this is not professional advice by the way, you can go ahead and test out your cable with an actual microphone like I've done here. As a matter of fact, the entire audio for this video has been recorded as a way of testing out this cable that I just made. <laughs> if this video is giving you any form of value, I think this is a good time for you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And while you are at it, please hit the notification bell as well. Now as a follow up to this video, I'd like you to check out how to make a balanced quarter range TRS jack cable right here. I'm Kelvin. Thank you for seeing this video. I'll see you in the next one.